Okay, so in this video, I'm going to be continuing with every question that has been asked. Now, I'm going to skip scale drawings and constructions. Firstly, there are only two questions that are there, and they're not going to be very easy for me to draw on this. So that's only a couple of things to miss out. But I'm going to continue with compound measures that we've got here. And when I go to compound measures, it's a fully hyperlinked document here. We're going to start off just doing speed, distance, and time. And if you do want this document yourself, you can get it that is linked in the description. Now, obviously, the key thing we're going to use with speed, distance, and time is our distance, speed, time, triangle that we have here. And we're going to go straight in with this question. So it says, Ollie drove 56 kilometers from Liverpool to Manchester. He then drove 61 kilometers from Manchester to Sheffield. His average speed from Liverpool to Manchester was 70 kilometers an hour, and it took him 75 minutes to drive from Manchester to Sheffield. Work out Ollie's average speed for his total drive from Liverpool to Sheffield. So if we're going to be doing the speed for the total drive, that means we're going to need to find out the total distance and we're going to need to find out the total time and then we can do a calculation with that. So I'm going to begin by finding out what the total distance is that is being travelled and the total distance that's being travelled is just 56 plus 61 and we're using a calculator but that is just 117 for that. Now we're going to try and work out what the total time is that is being taken. Well we've already got the time from Manchester to Sheffield so let's have a think about from Liverpool to Manchester. We're going to think about what it is from Liverpool to Manchester. Now the time for that part of the journey is going to be the distance divided by the speed. And the distance from Liverpool to Manchester is 56 and the speed is 70 kilometres per hour. So I'm going to do 56 divided by uh, 70. So 56 divided by 70, that is 0 0.8 hours. So we have 0 0.8 hours. Now what I think we're going to do is find out what the total time is. So the total time, got to be really careful here because some of it is in hours and some of it is in minutes. So we need to think what is 75 minutes in hours. We're going to do 75 divided by 60 to convert that into hours. So 75 divided by 60 is 1.25. Obviously I'm using a calculator here because it's a calculator paper. So the total time is 0 0.8 plus 1.25, which means that the average speed is going to be, using the triangle, it's the distance divided by time. So it's going to be the total distance, which is 117, divided by the total time. Well, these add together and give you 2.05, and we will get what the average speed is. So that's 117 divided by 2.05. And we get the answer 57.1 to one decimal place. So the average speed is 57.1 kilometers per hour, and that is to one decimal place. So the key thing for this, total distance and total time need to be done. I'll say this is the total distance and the total time we've calculated as this point over here. Okay, so for this second part, it says that Janie drove from Barnsley to York and Janie's average speed from Barnsley to Leeds was 80 and her average speed from Leeds to York was 60. She says that her average speed from Barnsley to York can be found by working out the mean of 80 and 60. If Janie is correct, what does this tell you about the two parts of Janie's journey? Now, you could only find the average if both of these parts of the journey were the same amount of time. Because these are both talking about 80 kilometers per hour and 60 kilometers per hour, it can only work if you are measuring those two parts of the journey and take the exact same amount of time. So what does this tell you about the two parts of Janie's journey? They are the same amount of time. So let's see if we've got this right. The first one should have been 57.1, and the explanation is that the time taken for the two parts of the journey must be the same. Okay, let's have a look at the next question here. It says that James and Peter cycled along the same 50 kilometers route. James took two and a half hours to cycle the 50 kilometers. Peter started to cycle five minutes after James started to cycle. Peter caught up with James when they had both cycled 15 kilometers. James and Peter both cycled at constant speeds work out Peter's speed. Okay, so it says that we are going to find that, sorry, Peter started to cycle five minutes after James started to cycle, and Peter caught up with James when they had both cycled 15 kilometers. So let's find out how far James has cycled when he's gone, uh, sorry, how long it's taken him to do 15 kilometers. So let's think about James for a second, okay? If we think about what James's speed is, that's going to help us with this problem. So we know that speed is the distance divided by time. 
and the distance that James is traveling is 50 and the time he does it in is two and a half hours or 2.5 hours. Now this is non-calculator, so I'm gonna do 50 divided by 2.5. Now, I don't usually like dividing by decimals, so I'm actually just gonna double this. I'm gonna double the top and I'm gonna double the bottom. So 100 divided by five is just 20. So James's speed is 20 kilometers per hour. And it says here that Peter caught up with James when they had both cycled 15 kilometers. So let's find out the time when James has done 15 kilometers. So it's gonna be James again, and we're gonna find out the time when he has done 15 kilometers. So the distance is 15 kilometers. So time is equal to, if you think about a triangle, distance, speed, and time, it is gonna be the distance divided by the speed. So it's 15 kilometers, and the speed is going to be 20. So it is 15 over 20, which simplifies to three quarters of an hour. Now, three quarters of an hour is the same thing as 45 minutes. So let's try and use this information. It says Peter caught up with James when they had both cycled 15 kilometers. In other words, this was at 45 minutes. It also said that Peter started to cycle five minutes after James started to cycle. So Peter has started, or let's say Peter has traveled 15 kilometers, because that's the distance that he's done, but he didn't do it in 45 minutes, he did it in 40 minutes. Now 40 minutes, we need to convert that to an hour. 40 minutes, if we divide it by 60, we get four over six or two over three. So 40 minutes is two thirds of an hour. So we're now gonna find out what Peter's speed is. So we're gonna think about Peter and we're gonna work out his speed. Because it's a constant speed, we don't need to use the 50. We know that he has done 15 kilometers, so it's the distance divided by the time, which is two thirds. So I'm gonna do 15 divided by two thirds. Now that is 15 divided by two thirds. We know that when you divide fractions, that's the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So that's multiplying that by three over two. So I'll do 15 times by three and then divide it by two. That is 45 divided by two, which is 22.5 kilometers per hour. I think this is a really hard question. So first of all, let's just quickly go through what we did. We knew that James' speed was constant, so we worked it out. We then worked out how long it took James to do the 15 kilometers, which was 45 minutes, which meant that Peter had traveled those 15 kilometers in only 40 minutes, because he set off five minutes later. And so we could work out Peter's speed by doing that 15 kilometers divided by the time, which gave us 22.5 kilometers per hour. I think a lot of people would find that hard because, oh, it's just difficult. It's just a really hard question. So let's see if we got it right. Yeah, we did get 22.5, and it was five marks for this one here as well. Okay, it says Lara is a skier. She completed a ski race in one minute, 54 seconds. The race was 475 meters in length. Lara assumes that her average speed is the same for each race. Using this assumption, work out how long Lara should take to complete a 700 meter race. Give your answer in minutes and seconds. So I think we can work out how long, how much she does per second. So I'm gonna convert one minute and 54 seconds. One minute is 60 seconds, and we've also got the 54 seconds. So 60 plus 54 is 114 seconds. So I'm gonna begin by working out what Lara's speed is. So her speed in meters per second is going to be the distance divided by the time, which is 114. So I'll do 475 divided by 114. 475 divided by 114, which I'm gonna just leave as a fraction, which is 25 over six. And it says how long it should take her to complete a 700 meter race. So now I'm gonna do time, and time is equal to the distance divided by the speed. And the speed is 25 over six. And it's perfectly fine for us to write this as like a division. I've already kind of got it stored in my calculator as 25 over six. So I can just do 700 divided by my answer that I've got here. And I get 168. So it is gonna be 168 seconds. All I need to do now is to convert that into minutes. Well, I know that one minute is 60 seconds, so I guess I could divide it by 60, but what I'm gonna do is I'll take off one minute from it, and then I'll take off another minute from it. So it's two minutes and 48 seconds. So that is two minutes and 48 seconds. 
Lara's average speed actually increases the further she goes. How does this affect your answer to part A? Well, if she's getting faster, we know that as things get faster, it would take you less time to travel somewhere. So how does this affect our answer to part A? It decreases our answer to part A. So let's check we've got this right. 2 minutes and 48 seconds and quicker time or faster time, it decreases the time. So num this time we've got a calculator and it says Nima was driving to a hotel. He looked at his sat-nav at 1.30. This is the time and then we've got the distance to the destination. Nima arrived at 14.48. Work out his average speed from 13.30 to 14.48 and you must show you're working. So first of all, we need to work out the distance in the time and the time is going from 13.30 to 14.48. Now that's definitely increased by one hour and it's also got the 18 minutes as well. Now I think we're going to need to find out what this is in um, as an hour. So one hour and 18 minutes. Let's first of all convert that into just minutes. One hour and 18 minutes, that is 78 minutes. And now I'm going to convert that to hours by doing 78 divided by 60. 78 divided by 60 is 1.3 hours. So this is 1.3 hours is the length of his journey. So we're going to work out the speed and the speed is the distance divided by the time. Remember we have our triangle up here, distance, speed and time. So the speed is the distance divided by time. So we're going to do 65 divided by 1.3 and we come up with the answer of 50. Now the units for this are going to be kilometers per hour. So we come up with 50 kilometers per hour here. Great, and we've got the right answer. And um, yeah, you can see the this bit I think is a bit harder to understand. Hopefully my method will make more sense to you. Okay, this one is a non-calculator one. It says a car travels for 18 minutes at an average speed of 70 kilo 72 kilometers per hour. How far will the car travel in these 18 minutes? So we know that distance is equal to the speed multiplied by the time. But the issue here is that this is in kilometers per hour and this is in minutes. So the first thing we're going to need to do is convert 18 minutes into hours. Now the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to divide it by 60. I'm going to do 18 divided by 60 and I'm going to simplify that fraction by dividing the top and bottom by 6. If I divide this by 6 I get 10. If I divide this by 6 I get 3. And 3 divided by 10 is 0.3. So 18 minutes is 0.3 hours. So the distance is going to be 72 multiplied by 0.3. So what I need to do now is find out what 0.3 of 72 is. Well, I'm just going to do 72. I'll times it by 3, and then I'll just add the decimal point back in. So 3 times 2 is 6, and 3 times 7 is 21. So it's not going to be 216. It is going to be 21.6 kilometers. David says 72 kilometers, 72 kilometers per hour is faster than 20 meters per second. Is David correct? Okay, well, you can do this either way around. I'm going to do 20 meters per second. So this is 20 meters per second. Now we're going to find out how many you would go, how many meters you would go in one minute. So in other words, when you go from seconds to minutes, we multiply by 60. So I'm going to times this by 60 as well. 20 times 60 is 1,200 meters. They go 1,200 meters per minute. Now we're going to see what about if it's in per hour. Well, the number of minutes in an hour is 60. So I'm also going to have to multiply this side by 60 again. I'm just going to do the 12 times 6. 12 times 6, 6 times 2 is 12 and 6. Add that on is 72. So it's going to be a 72 with three zeros. So it's actually 72,000 meters per hour. And we're now just going to convert that from meters to kilometers. That is 72 kilometers per hour. So is David correct? No, they are the same speed. No, they are the same speed. Let's double check we've got this right. So we've got 21.6. And note, they are equivalent to each other. So we, um, we say that he is wrong. Okay, we've still got another speed distance time question. Only question two in this exam paper, and it's a calculator one. Andy cycles a distance of 30 kilometers at this average speed. He then runs 12 kilometers at this speed. Work out the total time that he takes. Give your answer in hours and minutes. So let's look at the cycle part that we've got here. We're going to do the time for the cycling. Time is equal to distance over speed. 
the distance is 30, the speed is 24, so we'll do 30 divided by 24, 1.25 hours. We'll worry about the hours and minutes at the end. Now we're going to do the running section. The time is equal to the distance divided by the speed. So we'll work out what 12 divided by 8 is. 12 divided by 8, that's 1.5. And so the total time is 1.25 plus 1.5, which is 2.75 hours. Now, the 2 is obviously going to refer to the 2 hours. The 0 0.75, if you're not sure, you can do, hang on a second, if you're not sure, you can do 0 0.75, you can multiply that by 60 to find out how many minutes it is. And 0 0.75 times 60 is 45, so it's 2 hours and 45 minutes for this. Let's double check we've got this one. Yep, 2 hours and 45 minutes. And that's everything that's been asked on speed, distance, time. In the next video, I'm going to be doing some things on pressure, force, and area.